me, Jesus is a universal good more than a sort of figurehead. I take sort of the whole picture more than I do combine it into one thing. Take all the best points from all religions and sort of take the golden rule from everything. I don't really believe in Jesus, actually. I believe more in uh, Darwin's perception of how we got here. So Jesus really doesn't mean too much to me at all. Oh, Jesus Christ is the savior. He's the savior. Well, I don't believe in any one particular name or anything, but I know there is God somewhere, someone. So there's some kind of power that kind of helps things happen. But that, I don't give it any name. For me, it's no name anyways. Son of Mary. Yeah. Son of God, I don't know. Yeah. I think Jesus was uh, like a really highly developed person um, spiritually, but I don't believe in like Christianity and like, because they've changed all the beliefs. I think Jesus is someone who, who existed at one time and was probably a, a very creative man and maybe a bit of a magician and uh, obviously a leader, but uh, I, I don't really think about it all that much, to be honest. <laughs> Jesus is myself for me, because I find through my own doings in this world, I, that's the only way I'm going to get by, is by believing in myself. I, I find that I don't need to believe in in uh, going to church or giving money, monetary funds to the church whatsoever. I believe that through my own perseverance, through my own hard work, through my own doing, I am my own God, I'm my own self God. So I'm, I'm the one who succeeds or fails. God isn't the one who succeeds or fails. Jesus for me doesn't exist. I'm a Catholic, I'm a Catholic and uh, well I don't really sort of go to church much, but I do believe in God. Oh, uh, well for me he's God. Well, I think Jesus is the Son of God, and if the moderator says there is any doubt about that, then we have to scrap all our Christmas songs, then we have to scrap most of the New Testament, you have to scrap Isaiah. So if you believe in the Bible, then everywhere it is foretold that Jesus is the Son of God, and that the Messiah would come. Who is Jesus? I don't really believe in Jesus. Who is Jesus for me? I don't know, to me Jesus is just, just uh, not really a person, but it's something you believe in, right? So, I mean, Jesus can be anything as long as uh, it's something you believe in, I guess. It's your faith in whatever you want to achieve in life. Um, Jesus can be uh, a goal. Jesus can be uh, something you live for. So I guess Jesus, is, to me, is everything. It's, it's part of you, part of every day, part of your life. I can't really put to one word what Jesus is, but it's just, it's everything. Uh, he's a lot of things. He uh, provides a lot of comfort to uh, people uh, and a lot of history. Um, as history says, God. I mean, is he's the son of God and made man and, and came to help us. Yeah, I believe in God, so Jesus is a savior to me. Yeah. I'm Brad Newcomb. The United Church of Canada is the largest Protestant denomination of the Christian Church in our country. It was formed in 1925 with the union of the Presbyterian, Methodist, and Congregational Churches. Since then, it has been no stranger to controversy and has often taken bold decisions, including ordaining women in 1936, apologizing to First Nations people for insensitive treatment and sensitivity to their culture and religion in 1986, and in 1988, deciding to ordain openly gay and lesbian people. It elects a moderator every two or three years at its general council. And in August of 1997, the Right Reverend Bill Phipps was elected as moderator. He gave an interview to the Ottawa Citizen a few months later, in which uh, you made some uh, comments which have aroused some controversy including whether Jesus was God or not, whether Jesus is the only way to God, 
what was the nature of the resurrection? Do you believe in the bodily resurrection? And where should we be spending our time, particularly with an option for the poor? So we're going to talk about these things, and my guests are the Right Reverend Bill Phipps, who is moderator of the United Church, and the Reverend Ed Searcy, who is the minister at University Hill United Church in Vancouver. Welcome to both of you. Nice to be here. Thank you for Good coming. Good. Okay, well, we're calling this program, Who is Jesus? So let us just, I'd like to ask both of you, who is Jesus for you? How do you understand Jesus? Well, it's a large topic, but I'll start off with uh, what I said in that Ottawa Citizen article and what mm -hmm. I've tried to say since then. Um, I believe that Jesus embodies as much of the divine or God in a human being as is possible to be revealed in a human being. And therefore, Jesus is special and unique, and the Christian makes that leap of faith that in Jesus we have a particular, unique, and special revelation of, of God. Mm -hmm. Some people would say Jesus is a unique lens through which we see God or a window through whom we see God, uh, and so on. And because of that, uh, Jesus is, for Christians, the most significant person in, in world history and leads us uh, into the world to try to uh, uh, achieve God's will and calls us into discipleship into the world. But uh, the Christian makes the leap of faith that Jesus is a unique revelation of, of God. God and therefore shows us the way in which God would have us live and uh, relate to each other and to the earth. Uh, how do you understand Jesus, Ed? Who is Jesus for you? Jesus, I think, for us as the Christian community is always dependent on the other title that's given to him. Jesus as a historical person is what you're talking about when you talk about Jesus. As soon as you call him Jesus Christ uh, or give him any other such title, you're joining the early Christian community, I believe, in identifying Jesus as God present on earth. Uh, I think what, what's caused some of us concern about the moderator's comments is in his attempts to talk about the humanity of Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, he's chosen to use negative language to, be, to answer the question, is Jesus God, with a negative, but, uh, but let me hear. I would say that Christians um, have held from the very beginning that they must answer a question, who is Jesus? Is Jesus God? With the paradoxical statement, yes and no. Okay, exp Je explain yes and well, no. Well, I think what we, we, uh, Bill, uh, Bill likes to yep. use the language that uh, Jesus is the most of God that can be in a human being. So, uh, yep. we've been yep. seen in a human being. And uh, since I've heard that, I've been struggling with it. I mean, Christians in every age look for new language in their different cultural context to mm -hmm. ex explain this mystery, this transcendent mystery. And all our language falls short of that. From the very beginning, I think we've always uh, realized the community has struggled to say uh, that it's, it's not going to be enough to say he's as divine as a human can be. Uh, there's some ads on the radio in BC right now about a gas uh, company that's selling uh, non -polluting, less polluting gas. And all the ad campaign is based on 30% is a lot. You know, this 30% uh, of anything is a lot. You know, I've only got 30% of my slideshow left and everybody falls over on the chairs. It's a lot. And as I worked with my daughter on percentages the other night, I got thinking about Bill's comment, well, Jesus is the most of God that can be any human being, and my problem with it is, well, how much is that, 30 percent? What is, uh, well, uh, God is the transcendent, is even one toe's worth of, uh, one percent, what's one percent of infinity? So infinity. you, uh, what, 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 how much is uh, one percent pregnant, 100 percent pregnant? For, for Christians, Jesus is, it seems to me, uh, from the very earliest, the fullness of God chose to dwell in Jesus, and we have to deal with the, this paradoxical language and not be ashamed of it, and so our struggle and that's, the, that's, in fact, the proclamation that leads us into the streets and to be with the poor. And my concern most recently in the debate that's hit the United Church is that it's an old debate set in context between liberals and conservatives. Uh, and it's, it's, not, it's not very enlightening or enlivening for me, but it's being cast in tones that this is uh, new stuff, this is a new way to go, and I feel kind of despairing, frankly, that we're revisiting uh, old, worn arguments that really don't have the possibility of giving us life. So, uh, uh, old, worn arguments. Just can you be a little more specific? Just sort of summarize those arguments. In the last three hundred years, in the period of the Enlightenment, reason and uh, reality have been understood to be, you know, at the heart of things. Whether okay. things can be proved to be literally true, 
In that time, what's happened in the religious debates is that we've got conservatives and liberals often debating about how things are literally true. Are they scientific fact? Are they psychological realities? And we have, a, we have this ongoing debate about... You mean like creation versus evolution kind sure, of thing? Sure. Is Jesus God? Well, don't sort that out rationally. Well, of course not. He's a human being or he must have been literally raised from the dead. I think the debate is set in, in terms that are uh, not helpful in our time as far as helping people understand the mystery that's at the heart of Christian faith and it's not helpful in interfaith dialogue, in my opinion. It's not helpful uh, in leading us forward. So I'm really wrestling in love with the statements that Bill's made, with how they're helping the community to grow together in, in its affirmation of Jesus as, uh, as God and as human. Uh, and I see that to be the heart of the New Testament witness uh, and at the heart of uh, the church's witness through time. I will let Bill respond, but yeah. just to say also that uh, we could have another guest who would equally say that Bill's comments have been helpful. And, you know, there are some people oh, who have found, have found them helpful. So, Bill, you could maybe respond. Well, I, <laughs> I agree a lot with, uh, with what you're saying because I, I think it is an old debate, and that's why when uh, I came out with these things in the interview and in subsequent interviews, I thought, well, there's nothing I have said that hasn't been said in United Churches uh, for all of my 55 years because these things have been talked about in these terms for much longer than that. So in some ways it is a, it, it, it's a funny thing that's created such a furor because it is an old kind of conversation. Uh, but I want to say something about, you mentioned the word mystery. And uh, uh, that's what leads me to say what I said, is that the transcendent God, the holy, uh, the God that is beyond all imagining, uh, to me uh, is holy and mysterious, holy other, and something that one never gets a hold of in its entirety uh, because of our limited perceptions and being human beings and so on. And that's why for me it is, it is quite not only rational but part of the mystery uh, to say that God is far beyond what we could understand uh, only in, in Jesus, but in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Christ the Messiah, uh, we do have as much of the mystery of, of God as can be revealed in a human being. Uh, but I have to honor, um, you talk about interfaith dialogue, I have to honor other people's experience of the holy, of the divine, uh, and say that uh, the holy and the divine is, is far beyond our imagining. In terms of the resurrection, too, I think it's the mystery of it that gives us its power. And you probably, you and I probably wouldn't disagree very much on, on that one, uh, well, maybe do because I? there's no question that the resurrection is uh, an essential part of Christian faith, and that uh, something uh, awesomely profound happened to that community of people three days after Jesus uh, was killed, that led them to. Uh, risk their life to carry his message into the world. What I was taking issue with was people who do try to put it in one sentence of a creed or try to rationalize it or try to talk about it in terms of fact or not and saying, boy, when you do that, you're reducing something that is mysterious <coughs> and powerful to something that can't be reduced in that way. Um, so to me, it's, it's really honoring the power. To me, that's the need, the reason why we have to, in, as a Christian community, continue to hold up when people say to us, is Jesus God? We have to say, well, yes, God is fully in Jesus, and no, Jesus is a human who experienced life like you or me. Actually, I, I think it, it is interesting that we may be uh, disagreeing profoundly, as I think you think we are, in some uh, fundamental theological articulation of the nature of Christ Jesus and the nature of God and so on. But I, I also think that uh, both of us, uh, not only just um, each of us, but uh, the thinking we represent and the faith we represent uh, feel liberated by the God we know in Christ Jesus. I mean, I, I would never say that uh, uh, your understanding of, of Jesus and God's revelation in Jesus is holding us back. I mean, I, I could never say that because Oscar Romero, for example, is, uh, is one of my heroes in terms of living out the faith.
But, but, so I, but I, I, I just want to come in here. Are there then some doctrinal and creedal sort of requirements to be a member of the church, to be ordained, uh, and then to be a moderator? Because, I mean, your comments, Bill, have upset people. Uh, people have been angry that I mean, there's not just within the church, but outside the church. And then, uh, Ed, you've been upset as a, a, a clergy person. Uh, members of your congregation have said. So are there, are there some things that are required uh, in the Christian faith and within the United Church of Canada? Well, I think there are, but let me, let me I just want to say something about okay. being upset. I think uh, there are people who would, are both encouraged and upset by what I have said, and I would suspect there'd be people who would be both encouraged and upset by what Ed has said. That's part of the, uh, of the tension within which we live in the United Church of Canada, and I think within the the Christian community at large. Has there not always been a tension between the divinity and humanity of Jesus? Oh, sure. I think so. Uh, I, I, my response to the question would be this, Brad. I think it is incumbent upon Christian leaders to state this is our belief as a community. It's a part of the Royal Council of Churches, a part of the, the Catholic small c church, universal church, and here's now where I stand over against that right now and judge me and mine against that. And that, in a sense, is what perhaps you have been asked to do by the General Council Executive. Is that correct? To temper personal views and to state more? Well, yeah, but that's not what uh, Ed's talking about. I, I, I think, uh, yeah, they have said, uh, they, ha they, they have said that. Um, I guess what I hear, though, is um, you're saying that uh, Christ Jesus is not central to my life or my faith in a way that is as significant or as liberating or as authentic or as in, in line with the, with the tradition as yours is. It's sort of like, um, I, I've got the understanding, really, and uh, it is rooted in the creeds as we go back, you know, tr retrace it back through history to uh, the Nicene Creed and so on. Um, and I want, to, I want to say that Christ Jesus is central to my life, mm -hmm. is central to my faith, and, and liberates uh, me to try to live the kind of life that um, I understand God wants me to live and is calling me, me to live. And um, I would never question or doubt that the way you understand the revelation of God in Jesus um, is central to your life and is central to your understanding of the Christian faith and as it has been understood throughout the ages and liberates you to live the kind of life that Ed Searcy is called to live. Um, I guess I want you to hear that uh, Jesus is central to me too oh. and is central to I, I think people uh, throughout the Christian debate who would uh, agree with what I've had to say. Okay, uh, if uh, you were going to, uh, you often talk to people who are candidates for ministry. If you were to have someone who presented similar views to what you've heard expressed by Bill, how would you feel about having that person enter ministry? Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. That's what I thought as soon as I heard Bill on the radio. And that's, uh, we would work hard at it. Um, that this is kind of a Christology. If we asked, is Jesus God? And the response we got was no, in our committee, and we'd have the range of debate in our committee. I'm one of two or three of us on our committee. We, everybody would know where we come from. Um, that's not to say uh, that I feel that people... This is different, it seems to me. There's a difference between being a member of a community, being an individual, when you're given leadership in the community to, to, to pass on the inheritance, which has been quite clearly stated, and I think Bill agrees, not just in the creeds, but right from the very earliest scriptures. Uh, um, uh, then I think if you have a position over against that, I, listen, the earliest statement is Jesus is Lord. Paul says, as long as you say Jesus is Lord, the Spirit's with you. I'm there. So am I. But I'm talking about, uh, but what I'm talking about then is the whole community's organization since then has been that in its leadership, we're charged with passing on that inheritance, not with, um, it seems to me, um, not with too recklessly um, uh, making other cases. That, I, I find that really awkward and uncomfortable, and I find it awkward and uncomfortable that it's come in this kind of a way uh, through the moderator. I don't intend to want to challenge the moderator's faith, of course. I mean, I think Bill is a follower of Jesus. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just talking about what his statements have done for me. And, and how, how has the reaction been in your congregation and people that you know? In my own know. congregation? Yeah, in your own congregation, uh, and also people that you know. Okay. Well, you see, um, this is where often the debate, at least as the way it's come from back east, has been between liberals and conservatives. 
uh, you know, and so there's sort of conservatives on one, sort of very fundamentalist almost, literalist Christians on one side, calling for resignation, and on the other side, sort of liberal social activists. And in the congregation I serve in the university, uh, I find uh, a group of people almost caught in between. A group of people who feel really upset, uh, concerned, uh, my colleagues as well, a number of my colleagues, uh, not so much with, with Bill, but with the drift of the community and with the inability to see that, in fact, the social gospel, the gospel among the poor, the gospel of Archbishop Romero, of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, of Mother Teresa, is rooted deeply in the understanding that in Jesus, God is fully present in the world. And so in some way, we need to find the language to be able to say that. We feel, sure, we're having a debate among Christians about the meaning of the faith, but if we can't be allowed to really raise these questions, if we're going to move now to a place where uh, it's almost challenging one another's you know, beliefs, I don't think that's fair. I think what we're saying is th these are crucial issues in the days ahead. Um, uh, in Germany in the 1930s, there was a church trying to be relevant with the community, and another church called, thought that people thought was too conservative. The confessing church, the conservative church, the church that said Jesus is fully God present in the world, was the church that, that out of which the most, uh, the most strength came to withstand the oppression of the Nazi party. The Archbishop Romero's and the Gustavo Gutierrez of liberation theology are people steeped in a belief that in Jesus, God is fully present. But somehow in coming to North America, these theologies have lost that core, and that's so the jump problem. So you I jump have. in, Bill, and uh, how do you respond to Ed's comments? Well, it's, uh, there's, there's, an awful lot, uh, there's an awful lot there. I think uh, that the core faith is still being uh, understood and represented by what, by what I have said. Uh, that God, I think I can say that God is fully present in, in Jesus. Uh, and maybe it's a question of, of, of language. Uh, How have people we reacted to the, about. when you've, you've, t you've made these comments and you've heard from people across the country and you've had both positive and negative responses. How has it been? Like what have well, people said to Well, I think uh, people have written and, and uh, sent email and so on to me uh, personally. And a lot of people have felt encouraged uh, in their faith and encouraged in their um, struggle with their faith. Uh, and there are a lot of people who have said, I haven't had much to do with the church. I grew up in the church, but I've been away for 30 years. And this is encouraging me to look at my faith again and to uh, go back to church. And in fact, I know some ministers have phoned up and said, gee, we had these people who heard you on Morningside and are, and are here. Um, which I think is encouraging, and I would hope that they would uh, go into United Churches where people uh, are discussing who Jesus is for their lives and how their lives can be made uh, more fully alive uh, as, as, as God would want. So, I mean, that, that's, that's an encouraging thing. In terms of the congregation I serve in Calgary, I mean, like the, the everyday members, the people who have been there for 80 years or 10 years or, or whatever, um, they're wondering what all the fuss is about. And, and, that's, and that's not to say that they're either any more faithful or less faithful than anybody else. So I, I think what I'm hearing is a very mixed bag okay. about people's reaction. Okay, we've, we've talked a lot about uh, people's reactions. Uh, for yourself, Ed, have you felt hurt by all of this? No, no, not hurt. Uh, a little, a little uh, dispirited. Uh, uh, recognizing that there's a there is some kind of a, a different shift going on below the surface within our denomination, I think with other churches among among us trying to look at the future and see which way we'll go. Uh, I guess I guess for me, as I as I'm listening to Bill and and trying to make sense of where we're going and who we are, I keep coming back to how I see the tradition we've inherited, uh, the the early the early and later period, and I think of it. Um, I guess I like to use the language of, the, of a touchstone. It's an ancient image of, um, of seeking gold and silver, that the gold miners would take a touchstone with them, a hunk of basalt. And the, 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 the touchstone itself was not of any value. It's not a precious metal. Often I think people look at the doctrines and the creeds and they treat them like they're the precious thing. You know, don't touch my creed. And so I think Bill's on to something there when he's saying it's not the particular language, it's not, you know, some piece of paper written that I have to agree with. No, no, the value of that piece of paper is the touchstone value. See, the touchstone it's is... It's a reminder, right? Well, no, the touchstone is a reminder. I, I didn't know about this until I looked it up one day in a dictionary. The, what you do as a prospector is you take gold, you think this is gold, you rub it on the stone, and you know the mark that gold will make on that stone. Mm -hmm. If it's fool's gold, you know this is fool's gold. We carry the tradition with us, the creeds and the scriptures in our back pockets as useful tools. 
And when we discover what we think is the holy, or we think is the real presence of Christ or of God, mm -hmm. we haul this tradition out, and it's a very important and useful tool that the clergy, the moderators, are, in, are called to, to carry forward. Because in our present day world, tradition is thought to be old and outdated. It's something you get frozen in. But instead, it's something you rub, you know, is Jesus uh, God? No. You rub that on the stone, and I think what you see is um, you see something that's not got the precious quality. Change. And one of the exciting things for me in our church uh, that is not dispiriting at all is I think there's been more Bible study in our church in the last 10 years than there's been for a long time. And I, I think people uh, are struggling with, with these questions. And I think the kind of this conversation we're having It's going here, to go on because it's well, it started and hopefully we will. It's going to we're really engage people. We're out of time, but the conversation will go on. And it's uh, great to have both of you uh, with us here. Thank you Thanks. both. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Talking Brad. with the Right Reverend Bill Phipps, moderator of the United Church, and Reverend Ed Searcy from University Hill United Church. Who is Jesus? The conversation will continue. Thanks for joining us on Pressure Point. I'm Brad Newcomb.